Top five, top five, top five. Yeah, girl. You ready to do this? You ready to count this thing down? We're doing the top five, huh? Yeah, let's set it off with one, two, three. Everyone and welcome back to another episode of Ranked Top Five List of Stuff That Don't Matter. I'm your host Tung Law, and I'm in a zoo full of some wild animals. Yeah, roar, roar! <laughs> you did it. Oh, 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 oh. oh he did. These do are it. all my boo. Wait, are cows in zoos? Never mind. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I the sad ones. The sad ones, and I have the saddest <laughs> animal to introduce first <laughs> as my first guest. A uh, long time since this person has graced the pod cavern with their presence, and I'm just going to introduce them right now. Dan Forrester. How how's it going? Rar. <laughs> okay, rar is my thing. Get your own animal noise. <laughs> I have nothing. You have no. You can't think of a single other animal. To I've never met one. So oh, yeah. okay, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Dan, how's it going? It's been a while. Uh, yeah, really good. Yeah, yeah, pretty good. Yeah, it has been a while. You're not drunk today, which is a uh, first. Yeah. yeah, that's the first one. Yeah, yeah. I just woke up basically, so I'm pretty much like in the same kind of state. Ah, uh, but... yes, yes. Some may say you've, you're even more drunk that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. some may. Mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't because you should put a drink in your hand. But maybe you want to introduce folks that usually have drinks in their hands. Yeah, yeah. Coming up next here, we got my my dear friends. We got Justin. Hey. hey and shannon whoa and so you're introducing both at the same time what a first I, please well hey, you know what? it's going in that order hey. we are we are one in the same yeah. it's like, true yes yeah you you didn't call me by my official pod cavern name though dan and i feel oh, oh can i can i do this yeah i've been asking you to do it and and every night and you just fall asleep so <laughs> So to uh, introduce the big guy, the real animal in the sack, Justin, (laughs) Big Dick Godly. (laughs) The Big Dick Godlies are here (laughs) in the pod cavern. Now, this is unusual in the way that I would usually, I I never, I never have missed a Big Dick Godly prompt ever Mm -hmm. in the the pod cavern. In the years that Justin, Shannon, and Dan have been in the podcast, but Dan insisted, in fact, put a knife to my throat and said, I need to be the first guest to be introduced and to nominate. So sorry, Justin, I That's missed the it. One. You know what? It, it's okay. You know, we, we see where your strengths lie tongue <laughs> and we see where Dan's strengths <laughs> lie and they're just not, there but i have faith that dan will will get there in the future and that's okay you know we're we're all (laughs) life is about learning it's a journey it is so yeah hey why are we in this zoo of a podcast today let me tell you it's because we are ranking animals we've ranked several animals type stuff on podcasts before but never movies no animals no Movies with animals <laughs> as leads. That's the episode title. That's what we're doing. And le- like usual, I, sh- I think this is the last two or three episodes. I, I kind of like pondered it a little bit and I can't exactly remember what those last episodes were. But I remember at least for the last one or two, I'd send Justin and Shannon and maybe Dan was there too, a full fucking list of ideas. And then mm-hmm. Justin has one that's just better than all of them. It's like, let's do that one. <laughs> and I'm like, why did I send you the list? Why do I send you the list? If you because you <laughs> need to feel like you have some semblance of control. And now that Shannon and, and, and myself are here, we're here to reveal to you. You have zero control over this show right now. You know what? All right. I was... This is ours for the next hour and a half. Welcome to Pull the Plug Podcast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's it's funny because the last, I literally just recorded an episode and one of the guests offhandedly said something like, you're losing control of your show or like, how does it feel to be like outvoted on your own show? And I'm like, it feels the same. I, this always yeah. happens. <laughs> I am numb to it now. I People turn on me. It's fine. Um, yeah. This yeah. is officially a takeover. And I think the list that you sent, it's great inspiration for what we don't want to do. And I think yeah, that's the value great. you bring to the table. Yeah. So get ready, Shannon, to not listen to the next 40 episodes of Pod Cavern <laughs> Shows. <laughs> that's right. So anyways, movies with animals as leads, which I think is actually a, a phenomenal, phenomenal topic. Thank you for bringing that up, Justin. 
Now, let's Fine, come man. up with some ground rules for today's episode. Well, I mean, I, I think Dan brought it up in the chat earlier today, and I think it's just kind of a clarification, not necessarily a ground rule, but we're talking animated and live action. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't have any particular ground rules that like immediately came up for me, though. Yeah. To me, it's fairly self-explanatory. So, I had one, and Dan, you're about to say something, but I'm going to... Mm-hmm. <laughs> Before everyone takes control away from me i'm gonna (laughs) assert my dominance here um but i was saying that like just no like monsters you know what i mean like those aren't animals like completely agree the the example was like monsters inc sully is not an animal i would say godzilla Um, is not an animal yeah like we're thinking animals like sure they can be i'm super down with like anthropomorphic animals that's fine like that's it's an animal and i also would say like as a lead we we should like really lean into that aspect of that because like just doing like a preliminary like kind of search of what other people have thought about this some movies that they list are like but the animal is not the lead or yeah, they're like I, they're I, not I the main character they have to be in my head the main character or like just toe to toe with another person you know what i mean I, like totally i think i think the the kind of definer and there's not really a good definition here but like if you take this animal out of the movie you have no movie like you have no storyline for your movie i think that's a good mm. kind of clarifier yeah Exactly. So. Dan, you had something you wanted to say. Two things now. So first thing, Justin just had to ruin my first nomination. Oh, I'm just teasing. I'm teasing. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Because you're super thing, keen on yeah. going so early. But no, anyway. no, no. I, yeah, I started thinking about this day. And then I was like, so movies with animals, at least I started like putting more importance, I think, initially on like the character in the movie that is the animal like it, like that lead character is like the reason I'm nominating it. But like, or is it the movie? Is it the movie as a whole? Oh, mm. I see. You know, like th- these are movies with uh, the, the, the top five movies that have animals in the lead. Like, does it mean then like the movie overall is really great? Or so is you're it concerned about you're the concerned character? About quality. Yes, yes. Yeah, like, is it movie or character we're talking about here, or it could it be both? I think it it all comes down to the argument you make. Yeah, okay. I do think that is if the, the official title is top five movies with animals as leads. So I guess with that wording, it's the movie that we're kind of mm-hmm. pointing out. I mm-hmm. guess. Mm-hmm. But you I'm not like a great character, on... but a bad movie. Or are we accepting both? So or my like... nominations are the movies it's themselves. I'm not nominating Sully. Like that's, that's not a real nomination. Right. But yeah, it's like not if like we're Sully using that. from yeah. this movie. It's this movie that has Sully. If that makes right. sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What, what else? I think we got it. Yeah, I think, I think so. I think, I think we, we got it. Yeah, yeah. We're, gonna yeah. we're all very... Flag. It's like a subtle distinction, but yeah. like I it just yeah. I was like, oh, wait a second. Because I was really like, I was like writing down like character names at first. You know, I was right. like, this movie, oh, because of this character. And I was like, uh, mm. wait a second. Well, you're going to have to shout out the great. character that the, you know, oh, of you course, have to yeah. say the character. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it's got to be an animal. There, ha- there has to be there's not many rules to this podcast guys but there has to be animal. an animal animal yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right fine. there could be several right, you know yeah, but yeah. i need to adjust yeah. my list so. yeah. <laughs> is there any other ground rules that we want to go through i think we're good i think we're set i was just thinking in the back of my head like uh, we kind of talked about this in the pre-show here but i was just like man i wish this was a samples episode oh, uh, which so this badly. is not this is not a samples episode we're not tasting beers we're not uh eating I mean, candy. we are but i mean but we're not ranking it uh, <laughs> not for the sake of the pod yeah <laughs> N- not for the sake of the pod and then like my mind went through like how do i turn this episode into a samples episode so it's just like okay top five like movies with animals as leads and which one would be the tastiest animal to eat <laughs> which animal would you cook yeah fastest? which animal would you cook what fictional animal would we cook and how do we bring that to the table that we can i eat? think I think that's a that I mean, and you can you can cut this tongue, but I think top five tastiest Pokemon could be a good episode. I will not cut that because I was kind of thinking the same thing. But beautiful, not just Pokemon, anything, any except, animals, except for humans. Humans are off the table. We're not doing uh, that. There, it's already uh, clear number one. Shannon's out. Shannon's out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Just like every episode of Ranked, we're going to go around three times, nominating three nominations each, making a master list of twelve, and whittling that down to a top five movies with animals as leads. List. Roar. Roar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good. That's another. Yeah, did you say kazoo? <laughs> Shazoo. Shazoo. That's not even a, that's, I've never seen that in a children's a, book. 
okay. You know, you have a children's book with like, what does the animal say? I've never seen Shazu. <laughs> <laughs> it's Dan. a European cow. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> One of those Scottish yeah. Highlands cows. I don't know what kind of books you're showing your kid, Dan. But... <laughs> okay, my first nomination. Now, it's interesting because, Dan, you mentioned before, because you at first had live action only. And then I'm like, well, animated oh, yeah. it has to be part of this list because there's so many good animated movies with animals as leads. And, and then I was like, oh, well... <laughs> When you put that in the equation, like in some arguments, you might say the animation ones run with it. They they could overtake the list entirely, maybe with some other lists. My first one's kind of a blend where it's mm-hmm. live action, ah. but it's also animated and arguably one of my favorite movies, like in general. I just it's so heartwarming. I'm going to nominate the series, the two movies that are out and a third that's coming. It is Paddington as my first nomination. Paddington the mm-hmm. Bear. Great nom. Mm-hmm. Great nom. Yeah. Fantastic. That's a, that's a charming little fucking bear. That's D- just. Dudes, that movie is so fucking charming. And anyone who watches that movie and says, eh, it's okay. Fuck you. I don't, I don't. Yeah. You, I you're agree. dead inside. You're dead inside. Mm-hmm. Paddington 2. What a, an amazing accomplishment of a movie. Like 10 out of 10. It's so good. Yeah. Have you watched Paddington, uh, Dan? No, I, I've heard the same thing. I've heard that they're really great movies. Just haven't seen it. I know, I know the character for sure, but just haven't seen the movie. Dan, come on, man! It's it's a it's a <laughs> bear wears human clothes, <laughs> cute little rain jacket, has an English accent, mm-hmm. uh, and, and gets into like what would you? I wouldn't say gets into trouble, but it's like very he gets into hijinks, hijinks, and like little, hijinks little, little, and little things, little problems, but little tussles, little tussles. But he has such a positive outlook in life that I'm just like, I love this guy. He's he's great. He's great. He I marmalade, right? Oh yeah, yeah he does. I yeah, love that's, that's what I remember. We've been trying to do like more movie nights with our son who who's like four years old, and one of the movies that was on the list was Paddington, and we put it on like oh he'll you know he'll like it, and we'll kind of you know periodically watch while we're on our phones, and we were just like engaged in th- like all three of us like just enthralled with this with this cute little bear. We haven't seen Paddington two yet, but no, but it's, not oh. not only is Paddington an incredible character, but those movies as a whole are phenomenal movies. Yeah. Yeah. Paddington's an institution, really. Like yeah. they're in the in the UK, like in London, like they he's at the train station. You know what I mean? Like his, yeah. his statue. He is, is a there. train station. I, I, yeah, that's right. <laughs> you ride Paddington. You go inside <laughs> of him. No. <laughs> well, that's another yeah. episode. How yeah. about animals you want to be inside of? Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> the inside of Paddington is just marmalade. Yeah. <laughs> it's really gross, but also so tasty. gooey. <laughs> but like Paddington has been in several commercials. Uh, when the queen was alive, he did like a bit with the queen and stuff like that. Yeah. He's like a very important figure, not just in movies, but like in like pop culture in, in the UK, which is, I think, really cool. But again, we're just ranking movies, not just Paddington. So let's go, Dan. What is your what is your nomination that you just needed to be the first guest today? I'm so sorry to cut you off, Dan. Real before you even start. How fucking funny would it be, guys? If it was Paddington, yeah. Well, not a, well, that would be funny, but if it was just a terrible nomination. I mean, like if we were just it, like, it oh, I expect it to be terrible. It's coming from Dan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, it's a, like some Mr. sort of Blue weird Shark. nom from me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Blue Shark gummies. What? <laughs> On that note, da 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 da. Do you hear it? It's oh, yeah. Jaws. Yes. Jaws. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, That's Shannon. Good. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> what a setup! Yeah, That's I know a that, that could be more perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, did you did you have a suspicion? <laughs> yeah, it was extremely on theme for you, Dan. <laughs> yes, yes, it's the most Godzilla nom I could do for this one. So I yeah, I would it. say Jaws. First of all, it's a such a great movie. Like all around, it's a great movie. What a great character Jaws is. I'm just going to refer to the shark as Jaws or Bruce <laughs> if you want. Bruce the shark. Sure. Sure. I'm going to say Jaws. <laughs> it's like not calling him by his real name, but okay. <laughs> Probably one of the only characters here with a like universally recognized theme tune, right? Even yeah, like my two-year-old son knows the like, duh, duh, from Jaws. Yeah. Although Probably I would because argue of Baby Shark. <laughs> that it's from Baby Shark. Yeah. yeah, yeah Baby yeah, Shark got it from yeah. Jaws. <laughs> yeah. True, true, true. The movie is so good. It's like, uh, it's like one of those movies I like recognize as being like a 
perfect movie, I would say. Yeah. Um, it just has such unique care, like fun characters. As it, it's like three movies in one movie. That's so. Whenever I watch it, that's what it feels like. There's like the the like the first part of it where it's like all the the beach stuff and kind of more of the horror stuff at the beginning, I would say, and then like the the middle portion where they're kind of doing more like research. And then like the the, at the very end where they're like out on the water, like that whole ending for sure, like feels like it's its own movie Some like great lines and their great performances. And then, of course, the shark, you know, like they they build this um, like this uh, crazy shark for the movie that was like malfunctioning because of the water, which forced them to not even really show it so much. So like this character that you don't even really see that much is so incredibly recognized and so scary, you know, so that's why I nominated Joss. Great pick. And- I love that nomination because oftentimes you think of like the lead in a movie as like the hero and he's absolutely the villain of the film. And I think it's it's such a great nomination for that reason. Dan, uh, what do you think about Jaws 2 and Jaws 3D and uh, the other Jaws? Yeah, there's it's yeah followed up by like a bunch of like not as great movies. I'm, I've seen Jaws 2 in like from start to finish at least once. And I thought it was like okay, it was like decent still. It just kind of feels like the same thing again in a way. But it still had some of the re- like the same characters. Yeah, definitely the first one. The first one's the one I've watched like a bazillion times. Would you rather? It's always like a summertime movie for me, like it's big a, time. It's yeah. it's honestly a great movie. Now, my question to you is: Would you rather be stuck on a desert island with Jaws the movie, or a bag of blue sharks <laughs> like gummies? Does the blue sharks did they ever end? <laughs> what do you think? Crew? Can I just keep do eating they- them? Forever. Forever? Let's give uh, yeah. 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 them forever. Let's give them forever. It, yeah, because sure. and I will say the Jaws, the DVD that you have, also will never break. You can always keep yeah, watching okay. it. The more mm. sharks that Dan has on the island, the less we have to deal with in our candy stores here in the real True. world. So yeah. yeah. Give him as many as he wants. Dan's mm. really thinking about this. <laughs> I am. See, if the island has like other stuff to eat, I'll just take that DVD because I want something to watch to entertain myself. Yeah. Oh, no, you, you don't get the DVD player or a TV. You oh, you don't. I yeah. just get the DVD. But, but it's the a candy. sick DVD. Of that. It's yeah. the collector's the edition DVD. Yeah. You get a little statue. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, you could probably use it to start fires or something. I don't know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Let's go to the big dick godly himself. Justin, what do you got as your first nomination? I was concerned about this list because like there's a lot of iconic ones and and a lot of the ones that I'm like really focused on, I'm I'm sure people are going to nominate. So I want to get this one out of the way. And it's Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Mm. Now you could mm. for me, you could kind of just say like the Planet of the Apes like trilogy, like we're talking in the new one, the Matt Reeves directed can, one. Can, Is can that we the first that? one? Can we say that? Is... I think like we could probably maybe you 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 could. It's because I, I, I don't care. Say, I... It's your what are you thinking? Because like for mine was I said Paddington, but really Paddington Two is the preference. But like, sure. What do you What do you think? I I'm inclined to say just the new Planet of the Apes trilogy because well, I think that. the the it took a, a a dead franchise. Let's be honest. Like there was a there was I think it was like 2002 2001 uh, Tim Burton Planet of the Apes movie, which is not good, and it took this kind of like old tired franchise and not only like revitalized it but made it relevant and incredible it's an incredible one the first movie is incredible but it's an entire trilogy of of astounding movies and it's a reason one of the reasons why motion capture acting is considered real acting now and it's because of andy circus's performances as caesar the the main ape uh, is is caesar and you very quickly while watching this movie you forget that you're feeling emotion and you're you're empathizing and you're connecting with a computer generated monkey like it goes out the window five minutes into watching this movie and you're just part of this universe and to me that's a testament of of the filmmaking and and how matt reeves constructed that world and and made that that film series relevant again so that's my nomination i honestly just did not care about planet of the apes like the original ones like Ever. No, me neither. I just did not care. I thought that was kind of like a silly idea. I love the the spoof on The Simpsons uh, with Doctor Zayas, Doctor Zayas, Doctor Zayas. I can Zayas. <laughs> <laughs> I can keep going, but I won't. But like that was the best Planet of the Apes thing I've ever seen was on The Simpsons. But the new Planet of the Apes was legitimately good movies, albeit like pretty long. But like the performance captures, like you said, Justin, and like the action that they're able to pull from it is is really good. Are they doing another one? Did they they're say- doing they're doing ooh I want to say like a limited series. Oh, okay. That's set like like Caesar's uh, 
uh, not part of it or anything like that. Like it's set like a number of years after the the trilogy. But I think he like they're trying to continue that that universe because it's so well done and well made. And one of the things that also that, like just kind of thinking about it is that it's so it's so earnest. Like you buy into it the the moment you start watching this film, you forget that it's a movie about smart apes taking over the world, which that it's a that's a ludicrous notion for a movie, really. But you just you buy in. It's so sincere. It's so genuine that you're just along for the ride. And it, it there's no tongue in cheek. There's no little winks and nods to the camera sort of thing. It's just no, this is yeah. this is the, the They're world pretty serious creating. films, too. It's not a They're lot of very comedy. serious. Yeah, it's yeah. The, the yeah. first one has like a moment that uh, is like one of those like jump off the couch moments for me. It's like one of those. I don't know. Like there's not many movies that's like has like super memorable like scenes. Uh, I guess there's uh, there's quite a few, but like but it, it's, it is one of those movies that has one of those super memorable, memorable scenes for me. Uh, it's in the first one where Draco Malfoy. <laughs> <laughs> you know he's like he's yeah. in the he's in the cage with them, right and he yeah. like he has his arm up and he like he like grabs it and he says no like that was like a that was a moment that i was like what like and i like just like and i know that this is about like you know it's eventually going to turn into like talking apes and stuff but i like i just kind of for like forgot that th- that would happen in this movie and it was really cool yeah <laughs> i i re-watched this trilogy this past winter and I've seen a movie a handful of times and that moment comes up and you're you're still just like, oh, shit, like it still kind of impacts you a little bit seeing it a few times. So the, yeah. the vocal performance on him saying that is like really good. Really, impressive. it's like really, really impressive. It's so weird yeah. that Draco yeah. Malfoy yeah. couldn't like cast a spell on Caesar or something to stop. Him, you know <laughs> right? I mean? It's yeah. just so fucking weird. It's what I, a piece of shit. Talent. What a bad movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's move on to Shannon. Shannon, have we ever? I swear Met? at no. what no. I swear we've <laughs> had like a nickname for you at one point. Not Big D I doubt Godly. It. No. Big do we ever say Big V Godly at one point? <laughs> I think we should. I mean, after two kids, you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna call you that, but that is hilarious. Shannon. Yeah, I mean we can roll with it. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Shannon, what do you got? So my first nomination here is one that's very near and dear to my heart. I owned this movie on VHS to the point that I wore the VHS out and I watched like I owned it, watched it on repeat like that DV or that VHS no longer exists because of the love I gave it. And I think a testament to the character, the the animal in this movie being the lead is the fact that he stands out among an incredible cast of live action actors in this movie. We've got Matthew Lillard, Freddie Prince Jr., Sarah Michelle Gellar, <laughs> Linda Cardellini. That is, of course, Scooby Doo. Yeah. He is a fucking iconic dog. He's like the animated character in a live action movie. He doesn't talk, but he drives a film and it's so I fucking mean, he entertaining. He kind of talks. Well, he's he like, he yeah, like, row, row. <laughs> 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 like, That's the extent of it. But like, to to drive a film and be such a lovable character when he was surrounded by a great supporting cast and yeah has very fine very limited dialogue in the movie just fucking entertaining as all hell and for i think it was 2002 the movie was released how great was the movie like the the fact that he looked as good as he did animation wise yeah he should um, not have looked as good as he did. He should not have looked that good and i don't it was just it was such a fun entertaining movie that but he looked not good enough that it made sense for a scooby-doo movie yeah like it, that's a compliment it like was it, still it part of the the comedy and the charm of a cartoon a comic brought to life right right now Cartoony enough yeah for yeah. sure i remember was, did they make two scooby-doo films with this cast two yes yes yeah um one of them scared me i can't remember uh for like a little bit there's like a spooky scene or something there's always a spooky scene in scooby-doo and yeah stuff like. but um i remember when this movie came out and i'm looking it up now on rotten tomatoes that it was reviewed very poorly 32 yeah. percent and audience score 39 percent i only bring this up because back in the day people the general audience the adults at the time did not like this movie the audience right. didn't like this movie but whatever happened in the last, I'm going to say five years or so, people have like, there's a renaissance for Scooby-Doo. People I feel like it's like a cult about it. yeah. classic. And I think it's because of people like me, like 2002, I would have been, I would have been in like grade eight, maybe like that. It was the peak like moment for me where I think I got it for like a birthday present or something. And like, that's what I did. Like I'd spend my weekends walking to the 
store to rent a movie. And like that was what I did with my weekends. So I think the resurgence makes sense because it's people like me that have this like fond nostalgia for it. And like to me, 38 percent like that's bullshit that there's no way that 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 movie was 38 percent because it's 100 percent in my heart. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 Chung, really it's nice. kind of like the same thing like uh the Star Wars prequels movies like yeah that like came a younger back. audience that like grew up with them and they love them now and they talk about how much they love them how great they are but like yeah. at the time I guess critics and older audiences that were rating it didn't like it mm-hmm. I also think that like Velma herself has become such a sexual icon and like awakening for for a lot of like LGBTQ <laughs> people as well it's just absolutely they just keep being like remember Linda Cardellini like Look how rocking she looked as Velma yeah. in this Scooby Doo <laughs> <An> icon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's go into round two here. Round two. My goodness. Shit, there's a lot of movies here. <laughs> yeah. This seems like a maybe a boring, I'm going to say it's a safe nomination, but it'd be insane if it wasn't even mentioned. I think that if I'm thinking about you know, best Disney films. Let's let's go to the Disney er- era films. <laughs> Listen to Disney Dummies on Podcavern here, but uh, you would hear our opinions on a certain Disney film that has as an animal as lead. And I know there's tons of them out there, so that doesn't really narrow it down. But I'm talking about a little old movie with a certain king, a certain Lion King. It's the Lion what King. What movie is it? Oh, <laughs> it's the Lion King. I was very confused. I, I, I can't do it. Anyways. Try yeah, again. I won't. No, it's pretty good. I, I don't I know it. the lyrics. And I it don't... sounded like it was played on the kazoo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I never took the time to memorize those lyrics. And I feel like I just don't want to, I don't want to step on any toes. With yeah, the, no, yeah, that's valid. Safer. You can do it in private. I'll just do a melody, yeah. the melody version. Absolutely. It's the Lion King, everyone. I mean, yeah. Like I said, I think it's a safe nomination, if anything. Thing, but at the same time, like if if you really think about The Lion King and what it's done for like movies and Disney in general and how popular the series was, I mean, like it got a live action movie, which was just OK. It, was, it wasn't that great, but like it made a shit ton of money. They're making a Mufasa yeah. prequel, for God's sake. What, what's that all about? <laughs> but it is just one of those classic stories that has stood the test of time. Like when we were kids, we had The Lion King, but our children and the children after that, they will get the Lion King too. And it will tell yeah. a, an amazing, very tight story. It's like an hour and a half. It uh, breezes by. It's yeah. surprising. And it has everything. It's a funny movie. It has incredible music. It has like incredibly heartbreaking moments with Mufasa. Dark as shit moments. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Great lessons. But again, like comedic relief with like Timon and Pumbaa and making fart jokes and <laughs> fart jokes and like action like the the scene at the end where like Simba and Scar are just slapping the shit out of each other with <laughs> fire around them in slow motion. Are you kidding me? Like, I, I don't know. It Again, I think it's a safe one, but if you really stop to think about it, it's like, no, it makes sense. It's the fucking Lion King. What are we even no, talking it's, about? So, someone <laughs> had to make that nomination. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, yeah. It, this would be, cr- it would be crazy if it didn't at least get brought up. Yeah. Um. And, er, you know, everyone's always got the complaint of, you know, it's a, it's a pretty standard story. It's a story that's been told numerous times and whatnot, but it, that's, did it that, that, that makes it a good, <laughs> that makes it a good story. Like that's, yeah. that's why you keep telling this story and you make it relatable to, all these different generations of people like we showed our son the the intro to it and he wanted to see it like seven times in a row like that first 10 minutes of <laughs> introduction to to africa and seeing all the mo- and the the animals and stuff it's a incredibly powerful moment within and, seven minutes or whatever it and is. it's got an incredible soundtrack yeah yeah, yeah. it's okay. awesome yeah. that well, let me sing it for you <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. no that intro it also, made, yeah. it also made uh eating bugs look really good oh yeah also yeah. that yeah. yeah dan still eats bugs he's eating bugs yeah. right now yeah. Take, that's you know, dan like wriggling in my friend's yeah. teeth right now yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It showed us our sustainable future. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is one of the few soundtracks, specifically the intro, that gives me chills listening to it. It's just yeah. it's just so powerful and it's it's amazing. So Lion King. Dan, what do you got as your second nomination? Uh, for my second nomination, this brotherly trio has made lots of different movies, but I'm gonna say the Chipmunk Adventure. <laughs> oh, <very laughs> love it. So this is the older. This is an older one. Again, they've they've done some other like CG movies and stuff, but uh, this is one I grew up with. I don't know if anyone else here had watched it before, but oh, yeah, y- yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. So like this is another one of those movies where it's like we 
watch this movie so much as a kid like me and my sister uh, we i'm pretty sure we had it taped off of ytv yeah. uh yeah <laughs> i i'm pretty sure i have the tape still somewhere in my house but yeah it's a great movie for those of you who don't know this one as well they're kind of like globe trotting they're like going across the world in a hot air balloon racing against the chipettes they think they're just dropping these things off to mark these different places they've been to and it turns out they're actually like inadvertently part of this like diamond smuggling ring and uh, yeah, it's it's got a lot of like it's a kind of a grown up story in a way, uh, you know, for so. kids. <laughs> but it has like lots of like great singing in it, lots of great songs. There is um, a great full animation soundtrack for to sure. this thing. There's a full mm-hmm. soundtrack. Oh, and this oh yeah. Is, to be clear for the audience, this is like Alvin and the Chipmunks, like Alvin and the Chipmunks. Yeah. Yes, yeah, but yeah, exactly. it's called the Chipmunk Adventure. I've actually never seen Adventure. this. I've never seen this. Oh, you, you got to see it. There are some things I think that by today's standards will seem a little bit more dated, kind of like stereotyping. Uh, so some of the Alvin does blackface or something, <laughs> and it's really not good. It's really strong, uh, but it's uh, I don't know. It's a product of the times, but I, I really I I still sing a lot of the songs from the movie like to this day. Like I even like sing some of them to like my wife Cheryl, who uh, she doesn't know the songs from the movie. She's never seen yeah, it. She but must she'll love sing the songs that. With she me. must love. No, that. She, she does. She does. Yeah, oh, but damn. I don't know. That's my no, that's my nomination. Yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. yeah, that's a great nomination, and that's it's an interesting one because it's such a weird thing with Alvin and the Chipmunks because I know they're chipmunks, but they're kind of like. They're kind of freaks, honestly, because they're, they're. Oh yeah, they're like, they're yeah. they're oh, yeah. demons bond. They're barely chipmunks, if you know what I mean. Like they don't really <laughs> look like chipmunks. They look like just uh, uh, Justin. How would you describe them? Long teddy bears, creatures from hell <laughs> yeah. that wear their initials on very long clothes of theirs, they're branded you know? into them. And, and yeah, <laughs> yeah, interesting. The chipmunk adventure, everyone. Mm-hmm, Justin, what do you mm-hmm. have? My second nom. This is a movie, the first movie that I wrote down when we determined that we're doing this topic because it's the first animal movie that came to my mind. And it is a movie that if I were to watch it today, will still kind of emotionally wreck me in some ways. It's fucking cats. I know it's cats. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It's not cats, but I'm pretty sure we did watch it for a cinema saves the world. I've seen uh, it. We've seen it twice for cinema saves the world. I've seen it three times now. Yeah, you uh, <laughs> should love yourself more. Yeah, yeah. Um, butthole cut. Yeah, it's, continue. It's, <laughs> it's a Homeward Bound. Ah, uh, uh, Homeward yeah. Bound. Again, we're talking series. Homeward Bound series because I think the second one's like Lost in San Francisco or something like that. Yeah, oh, that's um, a good one. <laughs> it's, it's actually a decent movie, but the first one is the one that is like for me. It's I feel like it's one of those movies that I when I think about like one of the first movies I ever saw. Yeah, this is one of the contenders. Like I Absolutely, don't necessarily yeah. remember which one it was, but th- <laughs> this is one of the the first one. It's it's a catalyst for me loving Golden Retrievers and Shadow. What a like, fucking boss! Oh my yeah. God, what just a fucking <laughs> king, man. legendary. <laughs> yeah. I love the fact that it's like one of those old school voiceovers where it's basically just. The voice actors are just narrating like mm-hmm. the, the lips aren't which they shouldn't. It's, you know, late 80s, early 90s movie. Like you couldn't do that. You should not real that. animals like, real like animals. Yeah. Well, no, but you, nowadays, if you would have that kind of movie, they would then like CGI the lips and shit or like kind of make yes. them move a little bit. And it's a detriment. It doesn't work as well. Yeah. Like they've uh, never done it as good as Homeward Bound. Homeward Bound has no. like mastered it. And ever since then, they've tried to do something. It's just not the same. It's not it the same. It doesn't. It doesn't work. You've got, I think there's a little bit in this for everybody. I think it's a really good, almost like coming of age movie for, to show a kid who's getting like a little bit older and you start to deal with like kind of real, real life things, but like kid real life things like, oh yeah, you know, the family is moving and you have pets that you love, but one is kind of getting a little older and, oh, you, you physically have lost this pet. And then the loss of a pet and, and it kind of it deals with a lot of like really big themes in this essentially a kid's movie, but it does it in such an accessible way that I think is such a great testament to it. Yeah, it's a really powerful film. Plus, the like it's it's just beautiful. Like it mm-hmm. takes place in like the Rocky Mountains, like you, they're going over like rivers and in forests and shit. And I think they meet a bear at one point. It's a fucking great movie. It's, it's good. Awesome. It's harrowing, really. They they it yeah. really is. Yeah. And there's a point in that movie. Well, there's a few points, but like near the end, like you truly believe that one of those animals is not making it. Like they sell you on the style. fact that what's that? Old Yeller style. Yeah, Old Yeller style. <laughs> like you really think like. Oh shit! Like uh, Shadow's not coming back. 
Like they really sell it. Spoilers, he does, and it's amazing. It's when he amazing. Does. <laughs> it's, one of, it's like one of those thrilling moments. It's like it's one of the moments that Dan mentioned with with Rise of the Planet of the Apes. You're like you're just like yeah, fuck yes. Like it's just it makes you feel so good after being so down for like thirty seconds. And do you happen to know what year this movie is from? Because I just think I, it's so funny to hear spoilers for a movie <laughs> like this that's been around since our childhood. I would least. I would hazard ooh. 91. We I watched this for that too. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's 91. Yeah, I think it's 91. I'm going to say 91. 86 is my guess. No. No, no, so. no, no, no. No, that's that would be like back to the future era. 93. Okay. Okay. 93. I was going 80. Same year's Jurassic sure. Park. Holy shit. Um, Man, 93 is a banger year for movies. I just want to mention because <laughs> I just, they just don't do it anymore because you have to train dogs and you got to train a cat to do like certain things that they, they don't do the same voiceover that they do now. So they're going to do it the easy way through CGI and like all this other stuff. And it started bringing me down this loophole and I'm pretty sure one of us or all of us have talked about this in the past, but I'll bring it up now about a movie that they use CGI to recreate dogs and stuff like that. And they, like, it doesn't give you the same effect that it does in like Homeward Bound. None of you guys are going to nominate this. I'll just do a shout out, quote unquote, a very light shout out. I'm not actually like <laughs> recommending this movie to anyone. It's called Call of the Wilds with Harrison Ford. And oh, yeah. it's yeah. when the uh, fucking yeah. memes of that movie came out of the dog, which is just a dude in one of those suits. I just put it in the chat. Oh, yeah. yeah it's just, it's just, the, the dog in that movie is just a dude in a suit. And the entire the entire movie is like the relationship of this old man and his trusty dog. And they didn't even have a fucking dog on set. <laughs> That's amazing. It's a while. And you can tell you can tell when they do that shit. And I think and again, it, Homeward Bound is it's kind of like I feel like it was one of the last ones where like you have this animal ensemble cast and it's done in that traditional quote unquote sense. And it works. It works so well. You can still watch that and sure some of the stuff looks a little dated, but it works still. Like you could sh- I, we could show that to our kids and they'd be like, "Oh yeah, this is good. Like I accept this film. Like this is great." So, I don't know, that's that's it's pretty awesome for a movie that came out like 30 years ago. Totally. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. one last picture that I sent in the chat is of the <laughs> Call of the Wild dog. Very cute in the movie, I guess. The dog has a piece of like a letter in his mouth. But it's just they show the behind the scenes is a human with a letter in his mouth. <laughs> and it completely, it's not even the same letter. <laughs> it completely ruins yeah. it. Stupid. Uh, oh great nomination. God. Great nomination, Justin. Uh, Shannon, what do you have? Uh, well, I'm really happy that Justin brought up his love for Golden Retrievers because ah. my oh. next nomination heavily leans on the love that you have for the Golden Retriever in Airbud. Oh, <laughs> oh shit, yeah. yeah. That he is a circus dog who escapes a cruel master and you're just cheering for him the whole time. Turns out this circus dog knows all the b-ball tricks and joins the high school basketball <laughs> team to become the star of the show. And it is so lovable and it's charming. I don't know. I know there's a lot of like local to us Canadian actors, like like the, the star Kevin Ziegler or whatever yeah. went to high school nearby and stuff. Like, <laughs> I don't know if it's known outside of Southern Ontario really, but I, I feel like Airbud was a popular enough. Oh movie. yeah. It oh yeah. The fr- it created yeah. a franchise. Yeah. Like, it created a, Air Bud, Air Puck, or whatever the yeah. hockey one. Like, they, they had a lot of them. Yeah, it's it was a, like... It's a it genre of movies now. <laughs> has has Air Bud, OG. has he played any other sports as of late? Like, any movies? Well, that dog is dead. Yeah, that dog is, that dog is long that, dead. Well, that, I'm, sorry to tell you. I'm sure they've replaced that dog in other movies throughout his his career. Uh, I, I, think I think he, he played every sport. One. Yeah, there's like a soccer, or maybe a hockey one. There like, was a hockey one, which is... <laughs> Of course, it's ridiculous, but it's more <laughs> ridiculous than basketball to me. Uh, oh, yeah. They, okay. they did a football one, Airbud Golden Receiver. That's oh. honestly that is an amazing that's play good. on. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Good I would on. buy a ticket just because someone made that joke. Uh, and then the soccer one is Airbud Three World Pup. Yep. Oh, also, okay. Also that's, that's, that's not quite as good, but okay, I'm seeing uh, a baseball one, <laughs> seventh inning fetch. I'm looking at MVP as well. This is amazing. <laughs> um, I think this one is maybe volleyball. Oh yeah, it's volleyball. Airbud spikes back um, oh. and then you got air buddies all the puppies so there's, oh yes there's a yeah. Lot. yeah oh but then it just it goes into a different it stops being air bud it starts becoming yeah. snow buddies space buddies 
the oh, search space for buddy. <laughs> search for Santa Paws, and they're not even the same. It's not Air Bud anymore. Those are just dog movies. Yeah. Spooky and, buddies. They lost their way. <laughs> Treasure their credit, buddies. <laughs> the the human lead, Kevin Z- Zegers or whatever. Um, he was the first three movies, which never happens in a tri- wow. like in a series like mm, that. So I'm him. I'm impressed. Wow, yeah. wow. Are uh, they good? No. Oh, sorry. No, they're not. Are good, they movies? But yes. But they are movies and they're they're fun. They're well, fun. I remember us I watching them. Air Bud for uh Cinema Saves the World, I believe. Yes, we watched we did. and I remember and it was actually it was okay. It was okay. Yeah. You hard. loved it. I, oh, yeah, you I, I liked it. Too. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed yeah, it. It's fun. Let's see. Let's go into our final round of nominations. My goodness. There's a lot of nostalgia ones in here, which I really like, and it makes me want to like nominate one, but I <laughs> Oh, it's it's so tough because I there's objectively better films with like animals as leads, but I just I don't know if I want to say those ones. You know, I'm gonna go with this movie because I don't think it gets enough credit. There's like a, a few like Disney Pixar stuff that I feel like gets a lot of credit, and I I don't want to do another one of those. So I'm gonna yeah, give one yeah. that's a little bit more still mainstream, but not one that's talked about enough. Who's played by our, our one of my favorite actors, everyone's favorite actor. Not that's not true, but a great guy, uh, <laughs> Jack Biz Black, Dixon. Kung Fu Panda. Oh uh, yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We just watched this movie actually. Which one? The first one? <laughs> we watched the first the one first with our two. Oh yeah, was first two. Yeah, <laughs> dudes, Kung Fu Panda rocks. Great. They're yeah. awesome. The, so the, good. All of them rocks. I cannot wait till they make another one. Like it's, I think it's a movie that like when people watch it, they like it, but not a lot of pe- the people who don't watch it are like, uh, oh, just another, just another kids movie, whatever, whatever. Oh, yeah. They just like dismiss it. And it's just, it's not, it's, it's legitimately awesome. Jack Black is amazing in the movie, in the film. The whole cast is really fun. And if you like, I'm a sucker for martial arts in general in films and stuff like that. And the way that they just have these, it's just a fucking, it's a, it's a Kung Fu Panda. What else do you want? It, it works on <laughs> so many levels. It, it like, it's ridiculous. You get, you know, the, the overweight Panda, he shouldn't be the Kung Fu master. And you've got this incredible voice cast. They're beautiful films too. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. the animation, like, Gorgeous. especially like the first one came out in like 2002 or three or something, like pretty 2000- early. Eight, it looks Eight. like. Oh, yeah. 2008. Okay. Well, still pretty early. Yeah. Like, it, you know, <laughs> and it still looks great. Like it looks awesome awesome and they keep they're actually all they're all good like there's no dip mm. in my opinion between kung fu panda one two and three in fact i I think kung fu panda twos it, it rocks it's like one of my favorite ones there were moments where we were watching that and i was just I, the genuine moments were like oh i had to like not say holy shit in front of my kid i think he does <laughs> dan have you seen these movies oh I, i've seen the first two for sure um he does like a kamehameha yeah. in one of them i forget which one it is i think it's two really great character designs like i really enjoyed all the all the designs for all the characters and great cast too as well w- what came first the uh, kung fu panda or the world of warcraft miss of pandaria <laughs> I, I, were they just like rolling off of the success of kung fu panda <laughs> I think they might have. Yeah, yeah. They ripped off <laughs> Jack Black and they owe him money for sure. Uh, there is a Kung Fu Panda 4 on its way in 2024, which will be... Uh, I'm pretty excited, honestly. It should be good. I suddenly got a, a flashback that the first Kung Fu Panda movie was the last movie I saw at the theater with my mom. Like, That's it, hilarious. Yeah, I got to a movie with my mom since 2008. That's a pretty long did time ago. You pick it or did your mom pick it? No, it was like a family night. Like, oh, let's all go see a movie. And it was, yeah. So <laughs> I, that's probably adorable. the kids, that's probably adorable. like my, my stepbrother and sister, maybe. It's a good uh, movie to pick, do. honestly. Yeah. yeah. Great, movie. yeah. Great, Great. Dan, what do you have as your third nomination? Yeah. You know, it's, it's tough because I, I, you know, there, there are lots of really good like Disney Pixar mm-hmm. movies to, to choose from. I'll, I'll bring some up in like um, some special shout outs later on. But the one I'm going to go with, again, I, this topic for some reason really is like pulling at nostalgia for me, like a lot, I guess, because like growing up, watched a lot of movies with animals as leads. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to say one that if I don't say and my sister had heard this podcast, she would like hunt me down, I think. I hope uh, you're saying the one that I was about to say, because it's maybe. nostalgia fueled. So I feel mm-hmm. like it might be. What is it? She'll be like really mad if I didn't say it. So I'm going to say it. Turner and Hooch. Nope. Turner oh, and Hooch. Oh, oh, sorry. Good, 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 sorry pick. Good, good pick. Good pick. Good pick. Yeah. 
It's it's like one of those movies. Uh, I I watched it. I think the first time I watched it was camping at like my grandma's campground. It was like out of like a, a neighbor's like trailer or something. So I always think back to that for some reason. But it's such a great like funny movie. It's such a great like Tom Hanks movie. Like if you like young Tom Hanks getting angry and shouting at people, like this is a great movie for that. <laughs> Love that. My favorite <laughs> genre of yeah. film. So yeah, good. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. I like just the, such iconic scenes of like the dog. He's like trying to like bond with the dog and then the dog will like do something crazy. Like uh, I just remember there's one scene where he's like on the bed and he's like shaking all he's like super wet or something like he shakes all of the water off of him, like just terrorizing. <laughs> like it's it's like a it's like an odd couple movie for those who haven't seen it. Right? Yeah. But the, odd, the, the dirty roommate is a dog. You know, it makes sense. So <laughs> they, they remade uh, Turner and Hooch recently. I'm not sure how well I it did. Think they did. I think it was a TV show with though. Josh Peck. With Josh Peck, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Um, I didn't. I didn't check that one out. I think it got canceled, so I don't think you need to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it's such a it's such a fun movie. It, it it's a little dark at times, like towards the ending of the movie. You know, spoilers. You know, for Shannon, I I remember it like it, it gets to a point in the movie where the, I think the, I think Cooch ends up like saving Tom Hanks, but he dies in the process. But you find out that you know he's has puppies with this other dog that was like introduced in the movie. So it's like oh, the his lineage like lives on. I don't know. It's a it's a great like kind of detective movie if I remember correctly mm. and just the the relationship that Tom Hanks's character has with uh with the dog is is really fun as well so it, it's one of those great like early Tom Hanks movies so I, I just have to say that one for sure nice yeah. Justin yeah. Shannon did you watch Turner and Hooch yeah I I loved it as a kid I feel like I've seen it once when I was like a little bit younger but I don't I don't have any particular memories of it but I do want to see it again like I remember thinking it was good so also young tom hanks old tom hanks good in anything that's true <laughs> tom hanks is just amazing i would just say <laughs> tom hanks may be too good for this nomination to carry forward because he hooch may not wait turner wh- which one's the dog turner or hooch, hooch. i'm pretty sure it's hooch i think I don't so know, though turner I sounds know. like I, like the guy's character i was about to question <laughs> myself on that though anyway tom hanks just he may take he may be the star of the movie is is all i'm about to say uh, so. oh, oh okay yeah Anyway, well, anyway, they're co-leads. They're co-leads. Anyway, we'll, we'll argue later. That's right. That's right. Oh, <laughs> I was going to say, and it's hilarious that Laura just walked into the room because I was just like too busy, like workshopping porn parody names of Turner and Hooch. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, turn her and Cooch? Cooch, for sure. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Anyways, yep. um, let's see. Laura doesn't approve. Okay, Justin, <laughs> what do you have as your... Your your next nomination. I feel like anytime Shannon and I are in the vicinity of Utah, Laura just doesn't approve. Yeah, and she's right. Just just a she shouldn't. She's right to write us off. Absolutely. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> As yeah. human beings, that's why she's not on the pod. Absolutely. <laughs> She'd be like, just shut up. Just well, she came on up. once, and we made blowjob jokes, and she was not here for it. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. fine. But she laughs at it. She laughs at it in secret later, like in the car, and every anytime she's watching, she oh, she listens to every episode of the show, which is insane. That's uh, a partner right uh, there. That's a that's, that's a that's a wife right there. <laughs> that's that's right. why I married her. She she's my biggest fan. <laughs> um, but I, I married have, a groupie. <laughs> I have heard her laugh at all the little jokes that we make. So is is as disgusted as she is while it's happening. She fucking loves it, and I know she's listening yeah. to this right now. I yeah. love. She is deep throating this shit. Oh, right no. now. <laughs> yeah. And so is it, the rest of our audience. She uh, loves it. Uh, yeah. Justin, give <laughs> give your next nomination that our audience can deep throat. <laughs> The tongue lashing it deserves. Um, <laughs> I've got two more. <laughs> oh, I got two good. more possible options here, and I'm gonna go with one that's completely out of left field. Oh, but I genuinely believe that this is a a good movie, and if you're a parent out there, you should definitely show your kids it because they're gonna love it. And there's a lot of good stuff in it for adults as well. And this is DC's League of Super Pets. What? It is mm-hmm. so good. It what? Is not way, Dwayne The Rock Johnson? Yeah. It is way better than it has any right to be. It's DC's best movie. It is. <laughs> it's for sure the it's best, the best movie. DC movie in the past 10 years. Let me How ask you something. Let, let me ask you something because you're both parents to, you know, adorable kids and stuff like that. Did you like it because your kids liked it so much while you were watching? So here's that. 
I am sure plays played initially into it. I I'm sure I'm sure it did. I'm I'm not jaded enough to to think it didn't. But anybody out there with kids knows once they like a movie or a show, you're gonna watch it a lot. So I've seen this movie like <laughs> four or five times now already, and there are moments in it where there's genuine humor for adults directed directed to adults. towards yeah. the adults that are watching it because their kids have told them that i want to watch a movie and the kids the adults have to be there like there's you know there's it's, a fair amount of adult a humor fair amount movie, of adult yeah. humor it it makes fun at all of the established you know uh you know justice league characters in very adult ways not in like crude adult ways but just in jokes that only adults are going to understand that many moments throughout the film i'm like that's really funny like that's yeah. genuinely hilarious and the stakes in the movie are ridiculous because it's a, it's a kid's animated film about super pets, but the stakes are real and you buy into them and it makes it, I, I feel like I've used this term like in, in all my nominations, but it makes it very accessible for, for kids as far as like understanding what stakes are and what sacrifices and what lessons you need to learn to like be, be a hero, be a good person. The movie does that better than most superhero movies. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Dan, it's, have you seen? It's, Dan, have it's you seen genuinely this? really good. No, I haven't seen it. I've seen like some little previews, so I I know what it is, but no, I haven't watched it. Hmm. I would recommend it. I would recommend it to give it a shot. I don't care one way or another about The Rock. I don't. It, whatever. I don't really care about most of the main voice cast in Kevin it. Hart. Kevin Hart's fine. <laughs> He's fine. Kate McKinnon, apparently, that's big get. Hilarious. Leon, She's Keanu Reeves. Hilarious. Oh, yeah. Who is All... she? Who is she in that one? Lulu. Uh, one? I don't know. Natasha Leon is a uh, Lulu, and she's like the okay. The, McKinnon's the main Lulu, and Natasha oh, yeah. Leon is it's, terrific. It's the, turtle. the turtle, the turtle, terrific. What's it? I don't know. Yeah, there's there's two instances <laughs> where they bleep what the turtle says, <laughs> like That's because good. you have to because he says fuck, yeah. and it's like they bleep it in this kids movie, and the kids don't really understand what's going on because ah, the turtle's fast, but the adults watching this film are like, that's really funny. And it's great. Like all the animals have their like superhero, like parallel, like the turtle becomes like the flash and stuff. Like it, it's really, it's it is so silly. Some of DC's best writing really is. Without wow, a doubt. What a, yeah. okay. I, this was not and even it, on the radar. So no, and I, it, it deals with, it deals with like animal abandonment and, and friendship and, yeah. and animal adoption, like a lot of like kind of big themes, but it's like, Oh, it's a kid's movie. Oh, so I can and make like people simple. having to like surrender their pets and stuff for various, like, Oh it's, yeah. It's, it's heartbreaking. It's emotional. Like, Oh my God. It's a kid's movie that fucking slaps. It's good. It, yeah. I'm in check it out. I'm <laughs> really should. Now. I will say though, it's losing me points. Cause I'm looking at this cast list. And of course I said like, Dwayne, Rock Johnson, Kevin Hart, Kate McKinnon, whatever, whatever. But under mm-hmm. Dwayne Johnson's credits, does he also play Black Adam in this movie? Because it says Black Adam here and Crypto, uh, the dog. That might that might be like a post credits thing, but uh, so, I don't I don't even know. I haven't watched the post credits, so uh, I, I was like, Dwayne Johnson, he did like a cheap com- tie into his movie. Just, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise that me. Fucking guy who's just tried so hard with Black Adam, he had to bring it into DC League of Super Pets. <laughs> That's uh, so funny. You, you just after, after the main scene, the credits start rolling. What, what the hell are you watching a post credit scene in a kid's animated film for? <laughs> it's, it's, it's like a trailer great. for Black Adam after. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ugh, st- it stop it. <laughs> Shannon, bring us home with your final nomination. My final nomination. We kind of get into monster territory a little bit, um, mm. but at the core of everything, he's just a gorilla. It's King Kong. Yes, oh, Shannon. Okay. All right. So we're looking right. at 1933, 1976, and 2005. Um, are sort of the ones that I was kind of looking at that I know, like you've got like what is it like Skull Island that has been much more recent and stuff like that. But, but like you're I was about the looking older stuff. I'm talking about the older stuff, like the stuff that I grew up. I mean, the first King Kong movie I ever watched was the 1933 black and white. And like I've I've watched like behind the movie documentaries of like the makings of and stuff like that. Like it's it's just such an iconic story and he's just such an iconic character. And then you get like, I don't know how many movies and TV shows and whatever comics and stuff have been spun off of this character. A million. Um, But he's just he's iconic for being this demonized gorilla and just a big fucking ape you That's just you is. can't argue with big ape with a the big icon that he <laughs> is yes absolutely not Same as big both. as justin's let's just be clear <laughs> justin yeah. has a bigger d than king kong let it let it be right. known 
the King Kong D. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, uh. but yeah, he's just like the the stories have always been like they're they're ultimately about like just I don't I don't know. It's everything about King it's Kong. About is love just... and rejection. Like yeah. that's, what, that's what those movies are about. Yeah. Love and rejection. It just yeah. like he just falls in love with a human, right? And, like that's usually the core of it. He falls in love with a human and and also he's a kind of a terror as well. He is, but then you also have like all of like the the and and now we're getting into like the themes of the movie, which I know is not why we're here. But right. then you have like all the supporting characters who some of them are in love with each other, but that you know it's unrequited love, and does that affect how they care about them when dangers comes and all this shit? It's like, yeah, it's he's awesome. just he's sort of this misunderstood monster, but he's just a gorilla. He just happens to be fifty feet tall. Is that it? Is he only fifty <laughs> feet tall? He must I think be more. so. I, I think that's that that's the that original. I, I, think I think the original, original is like fifty feet. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. Yeah. And now he's just yeah. like the size of a planet kind of thing yeah yeah Yeah, cool and that's yeah like i'm not talking where he's battling godzilla or anything like i i appreciate that those movies exist i've never watched them but like the fact the fact that king kong is a character has just like transcended universes and cinematic history is just like he he's too iconic of a character not to nominate all right so do you have any qualms of it going into monster territory with that one um no i don't actually because king kong is a gorilla he's a gorilla okay Okay. he's a demonized he's a giant he's a giant you know what's interesting he is but we have animated like we also have a panda who does kung fu as well. Fair so enough. that's true. Yeah, I, I, okay. I would have drew the <laughs> okay. line at Godzilla. I, just, I wasn't sure if where you were yeah. you drawing the line. Godzilla with it. would yeah. have been the line yeah. because Godzilla yeah. lizard he's whatever. A, but he's he's an not, iguana. He's but... not really. He's yeah. he's that's a monster. That's a monster. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, let's. Go I'm ahead. here for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Let's go ahead and take a break. And when we're back, we're gonna rank top five movies with animals as leads. We'll be back. Hi everyone, I'm Tong. I'm Sam. And I'm Laura. And we are... Disney Dummies! Dummies. Look, we know there are Disney super fans out there, but even the superest of fans could still be Disney dummies. That's why the three of us are on a quest to watch every single animated theatrical release in chronological order, from Snow White all the way to whatever's out right now. We dive into each movie in detail, talking about fun facts, talking about the animation, hit you with some hot takes, our favorite reviews on the internet. We even talk about who fucks. I still can't believe that's an actual segment. So join us every second Wednesday for another episode of Disney Dummies. And Pixar Pals when we finally catch up. Yeah. Yeah. Brought to you by the fairy tale whimsical depths of the pod cavern. Top five, top five, top five. Move over, everyone. We are back and ready to rank our list that we just nominated in the first half here. My goodness, we have a list for you all at home. It is a whale of a list. <laughs> and we all know what whales sound like, right, Dan? <laughs> That's just another cow. What? <laughs> the, the cow of the sea. Dan's whale is Shazoo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So our list of 12 is Paddington, Jaws, The Rise of the Planet of the Apes trilogy, Scooby-Doo, Lion King, Chipmunk Adventure, Homeward Bound, Air Bud, Kung Fu Panda, Turner and Hooch, DC League of Super Pets and King Kong. Good list. I like it. Good Pretty list. Good. Mm-hmm. Solid list. Right everybody. I will, mm-hmm. you know, it's so tough because, like, honestly, for me personally, I could have filled this entire list with animated movies, and a lot of them could have been Pixar Disney films. But, yeah. we, I mean, those things have been shouted out so many times before that it's, I think it's more important that we shout out, like, the kind of the underdogs here and there, you know? I, I, I would agree. I think it would be. Just kind of like a dull, like tired list if if we were all just doing Disney and Pixar movies, honestly. That, that said, I am so happy that Lion King is up on yeah. the nominations. Mm-hmm. One of those that I feel like had to be there. And I'm happy it is. Me too. And I think it represents that that list yeah. that could have been, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think it it's allowed to be on both, but 
out of all the other ones out there that I could have nominated, I feel like Lion King's like, yeah, all right. It's, it's still one. Lion yeah, yeah, King. Yeah. It's the fucking Lion yeah. King. <laughs> <laughs> it's the fucking Lion King. Yeah. Let's go ahead and star nominations for further consideration. We'll go uh, Justin. Star one that isn't one of your own. I got I to gotta star Jaws. Yeah. Yep. Jaws. Yeah. Dan is so happy. Yeah. Very happy. Yeah. <laughs> and Justin, to it's be clear, is starring Jaws the movie, not those dumb, fucking, disgusting <laughs> candy no. that you have. No, 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 no. I mean, who the fuck actually eats those? Like, disgusting. It's, it's all just We're so all just good. <laughs> so good. Marshmallowy goodness. Oh. oh. Barf. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. rescind stars. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, please don't. No. <laughs> Shannon, you want to star one that isn't one of your own? I very much do. I, I'd like to start uh, Paddington that uh, you actually stole my second nomination by oh. uh, nominating Paddington that just a phenomenal fucking movie. And you, you had me scrambling because I was like, no one's going to nominate Paddington. I, Paddington. I um, So you guys yeah. never seen Paddington too, both of you? Not yet? We've not seen it. Not no, yet. not yet. We're holding out for a four-year-old movie night some night coming soon. That is just incredible that you haven't even seen the best one yet, even though there's two. But we've seen the first one like a dozen yeah, times. Yeah, the first one's amazing, so. but the second one, my goodness. Yeah. Dan, star one that isn't one of your own. Hmm. I'm going to go with Homeward Bound. Yeah. Because yeah, that was one of the first ones that I thought of when uh, we were talking about this. Yeah, watched that a ton when I was a kid. Justin, do you happen to remember like the the voice actor for Shadow or anyone? Was it like they were all like big boy, like big were names? They? Were they? Yeah, that's, but that's it was Fox's you, chance. I don't think Shadow was actually like. I mean, he he might have been a big big name actor for like. I think it was like an adult old Hollywood Don, actor. A mesh Don. See, I've never a mesh. Okay, nah, never mind. He has know. done <laughs> movies, uh, famous movies such as um, I'm not sure if they're famous. They could be. Sorry, old people. <laughs> <laughs> Cocoon. <laughs> oh yeah, Cocoon. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Trading places. Wow. Oh. Yeah. That's amazing. Cocoon the Return. Okay, yeah. Oh, more cocoons. Heaven Can Wait. That's sad. Okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Harry and the Hendersons. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, you... Harry and the Hendersons would have been one of my nominations. <laughs> so, honestly, <laughs> this is... could have gotten away with. This is my mind. <laughs> Listen, old people and all these people in the room are like, I know this. I know this movie. I know this movie. Knowing all those movies, those are mid to late 80s, early 90s movies. So it makes sense that he was cast. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah well, I love that movie so much. Yeah. It was, uh, yeah, uh, fun memories watching. I don't have like strong, like, like scenes that jump out, but like, I remember enjoying it so, so much. Well, start that for one. me, it's like literally when Shadow's in the fucking pit and his leg hurts and you're like, oh my God, he's not going to make it. And then yeah. he comes back at the end and you're like, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh my God! Oh yeah, know. he like is like coming up over the hill, right? Like they they uh, see the first two animals, and yeah. then like you're waiting or something. Isn't oh, yeah. that what happened? Here, here, let yeah. me reenact it for you. Yeah, Peter, Peter. He's just saying Peter. <laughs> That's pretty, good, <laughs> pretty good, actually. He's like Peter, I love wow. you, Peter, <laughs> Peter. <laughs> Sounds like he's having an orgasm, but I swear the, the actor did a much better job. Yeah, you, you and I watch very different movies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you said Homeward Bound, right? I'm thinking of. Uh, <laughs> Horny word bondage. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and for myself, I'm going to, I'm going to star a uh, air bud. Cause I think it represents this. Uh, I don't know if we're talking about like nostalgia and stuff like oh, that. Yeah, it sure. represents that like level of, I don't know. It's silly. Like the, the movies with animals as leads. Yeah, we could think of all those like Pixar Disney animated ones and those really good ones. But like back in the day, they had real animals. Not saying they and they're silly. They're, yeah. they're silly. A dog but, had to be trained to do but, basketball tricks. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> not not that was a talented the, dog. Not all the tricks, but <laughs> a lot of the tricks. And I think that's fucking cool. So, except all the cuts where they show the dog with the ball and then they cut away and yeah. show it going in the hoop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that dog got one basket ever, but. That one. Pretty fucking cool. Um, I'm gonna say it. off his I'm, nose, though. I'm going to say it. That dog fucking sucked at basketball. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sucked at it. He did, but he looked good in a jersey. Uh, <laughs> Paddington. He was such a good boy. Yeah, yeah. That's what I care about. <laughs> Paddington, Jaws, Homeward Bound, and Air Bud. Those are our four movies that are starred. I'll open it up to the floor. Anything else that you guys want to star? I think we got to star Lion King. I think we got to yeah. we got to talk about Man. it. We do. Yeah. Uh, okay, it's cool. Uh, what else do we have to star? 
I, I know it's my own, but I I really think we need to talk about Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Cool. I'm down to tell you that. I like that. Dan, anything? I would also say Scooby Doo. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh. Scooby Doo as well. Yeah. Like e- even though like I'll be yeah. honest, I've actually never seen those Scooby Doo movies, but like I've seen so many other Scooby Doo movies. So I love that character. So yeah. But you but the movies that are being nominated for under this Scooby Doo umbrella mm. is the Freddy Prince. Is Jr. those ones? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. okay. To be fair then. Okay. I'll still I, say it. Why not? I'm backing Scooby-Doo. <laughs> I'll back it. I still cool. want to back it. An incredible yeah. movie. 33% say, on Rotten Tomatoes. Great cast. 39 great cast audience score. Awesome. <laughs> I'll take it. Here are the movies that aren't starred. Kung Fu Panda, Chipmunk oh. Adventure, Turner and Hooch, DC League of Super Pets, and King Kong. I do kind of have a soft spot for, for King Kong, though I, I feel like it's not going to go anywhere, but I... I was close to nominating King Kong too. I like I have such an affinity for that that character and and those movies and the love that people have for those movies. Sure. But I just don't. I Do you have more to say it. about it? I mean, I also like King Kong. I don't love King Kong, but I like King Kong. I know he's been around for a long time. I haven't seen those new movies, so I, I couldn't really speak to that either. I think, and this isn't necessarily a reason to to keep the movie on the list, but I, I think it deserves to be said. Is the original one came out yet, like nineteen thirty three, thirty three, thirty yeah. three or something, and it's almost the template for those like I know is is a big ape. But it's almost a template for those monster movies. Like it is almost a template for Jaws. Like I don't think if King Kong didn't come out, I don't know if you'd have Jaws. And again, that's not a reason to put it on the list. I'm just saying I, I think it deserves its due to be mentioned. You know, if we're starring a Jaws, um, a movie that we all seem to kind of have a, a, a pretty strong response to. I don't think you can talk about Jaws without at least acknowledging King Kong. I just think there's such longevity to the history of that character and that they, I don't know. I just wanted this moment for King Kong. I don't, we don't have to start it. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted it yeah. to have its moment. In yeah, the light. that's fair enough. I really I, like the Peter Jackson one. Like that's the one I've seen I, the most. Oh, yeah. I saw the theater. I love that movie. I like. I. I, I think I that movie it. gets yeah. that movie does not get enough credit. Was that honestly. not the 2005 one? Yes, it was yes. 2005. That was like okay. a three hour movie. Yeah. Yeah. Tongue, you, yeah. you'll be interested in this as well. That movie has probably one of the only like movie to video games that like actually is a really good game. Is it? Oh. <laughs> yeah, on PS2. Yeah, yeah it's, it's pretty good. I remember, I remember great watching game. the movie. It's really good. Yeah. I remember watching the movie back in the day, but I only saw it once in theaters. Uh, yeah, I don't remember anything about it. I remember Jack Black was in it. <laughs> yeah, um, it's Jack a good, Black, like, yeah, it's a good like wintertime movie where like you're just like mm-hmm. – it's Sunday, it's snowy, you don't want to go anywhere and you don't have anything to do, like put it on because you can just kind of get cozy, you can pause right. it when you need to. Like that it's a good that kind nice. of movie. Yeah. Justin, do you remember the ridiculous scene where it's like they're typing on the typewriter like skull? It's like each key it's oh, ridiculous. Fuck. It's ridiculous. It's, yeah, but it's great. Much. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. so good. <laughs> I'd like to jump in for the sake of Dan's family's nostalgia with Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, do you remember <laughs> Shannon, you'll remember this. Was it Dan? Yeah, it was Dan. Yeah. I uh, remember when Dan had this full memory on the brunch menu item of uh what was it what was it for brunch the phoenix buns no oh uh, the huevos rancheros huevos rancheros oh, yeah, yeah. huevos rancheros was by the way since that episode i also ordered that it's amazing it's, it's so amazing good. yeah it's okay so but dan had a full memory with huevos rancheros <laughs> and then later told us that was like a, it was the wrong thing <laughs> it, was, it was nachos rancheros <laughs> so i'm i'm only bringing that up because i'm like did dan's family watch kung fu panda or what, don't trust the my ninja turtles. Turtles. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was and the karate kid it was, the, yeah. <laughs> it was three ninjas so yeah. uh we could star kung fu panda for now for sure beverly hills ninja, yeah. Yeah. Beverly hills ninja. great fucking yeah. movie yeah. <laughs> so good <laughs> All right, the ones that aren't star Chipmunk Adventure, Turner and Hooch, DC League of Super Pets, and King Kong. Are we okay with that? I, I think so. I yeah. I'm happy that I got to mention League of Super Pets. I understand it not getting guess, on here, but ha- had the two of you seen the movie, I think it would have gone further. But I, we can't make arguments if you've never. I seen it. would I would argue if you'd seen it, we'd at least talk about it more. But I I, I get it. I understand. Mm-hmm. So we'll we'll move past it. Yeah, and two of mine like were just totally nostalgia fueled that I just like had to say them. I knew that they wouldn't have as like broader appeal, but I just like had to say it. Of course, <laughs> yeah. you have to. 
I'm going to read the list and then I'll read it again and we'll do locks. So the list is Paddington, Lion King, Kung Fu Panda, Jaws, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, Homeward Bound, Scooby-Doo, Air Bud. That's a lot. So let's do locks here. Paddington. So first of all, I'll explain it for the people at home. We're going to go ahead and do locks. So I'll read the list again. All of us will say if it's a lock or not. It's a gut reaction if it belongs on the top five. If anyone wavers or does like, then we just skip. Can you do that sound again? I really like it. That that one. You like that? That's that's really good. <laughs> I'll send you a recording. For your hands were that was really good. Thank you. <laughs> you know the grunting you was talking about earlier it would actually be that sound. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Um, so I'll read the list again, and if anyone wavers on the lock or not, then we just move on to the next one, and just yes. to wait for us to navigate through this list. Paddington is it a lock or no lock? It's a lock for me. I think only because Dan hasn't seen it. Like I, I think it's hard. Them, yeah. It's hard to lock it okay. when, when we're okay. not all in on it. Keep yeah. going, Lion King, lock or no lock? That's a lock. That's a I lock. Think we got me. a lock. Yeah. To me, that's like it could be like the number five. If we don't want to be boring, but we yep. still want to represent the the spirit of the I, category. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's do that. I I think I'd have a hard time with it being higher than five. But well, yeah. Let's lock it. That's good. Kung Fu Panda, or what Dan likes to call the Karate Kid. (laughs) (laughs) I like this movie quite a lot, but, you know, it was, I nominated it in a sea of other movies that I could have also nominated and and replaced it. So I would not be mad if this was locked, but I would like to, like, table it for further discussion. Yeah, Yeah, I'm in the same place, too. Yeah, Yeah, let's do that. Jaws. Uh, I'm okay with locking that. Yeah. Yeah. Lock. That's a lock. Rise of the Planet of the Apes trilogy, the Matt Reeves one. Lock or no this lock? For me is, this for me is a lock. Again, it's my nomination. But I, I, I don't know if this is a loud tongue, but I, if this one or, the, or Homeward Bound is going to get locked, I'm going to probably overrule for Homeward Bound. But no, I it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be either or. Doesn't, we right <laughs> okay. now. I'm locking this one then. That's what I'm doing. I could do it. No one else, though. Um, mm. Homeward. It's like in the same place as like a table for me. Yeah. 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 yeah I really like it. They're great movies. Yeah. Yeah. Homeward Bound, lock or no lock? Lock. That's a lock, lock. yeah. Classic. Hey, Ta. <laughs> <laughs> that that got everybody over the edge, as it were. You should, you should watch the, the scene. Lois the Griffin, he, slow down a little bit. He just, hey, Ta. Hey, ta. <laughs> He's just so happy. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Scooby Doo, lock or no lock? Lock. Uh, not, okay. I, not for me. Not That's for right. me. I mean, Fine. Velma's definitely for me, but Ooh, Scooby Doo. Yeah, come on, <laughs> lock her up. There's that. Whoa, whoa. Oh my god! Like There's, consensually. Th- that okay. she's into it. Yeah, I yeah. know why okay, Shannon cool. likes it so much because for a kids movie, it's incredibly horny. It's it's, it's a sexual horny. awakening. Yes. <laughs> well, and I'm not saying that to be like tongue and cheeky. Like I'm not saying that to just be regular tongue horny or like it, it's an actually. Like oh, they do sure. a thing where they like switch bodies and like one of them's just like, hey, hey I can stare at my boobs now. <laughs> and like they're yeah. just all about that and like they're touching their junk and be like, oh my God, I got a dick. You know, like that kind of thing. <laughs> they acknowledge that that's yeah. what we would all do. Yeah, yeah exactly. If I switch, <laughs> switch bodies with Justin, I would for sure just be staring and stroking <laughs> that big D <laughs> that entire time. <laughs> oh. That trombone of a dick. Uh, let's yeah. go to Air Bud. The trombone. Owner, if you will. Oh, very good. Uh, Air Bud, lock or no lock? I'd lock it, honestly. I, kinda, I really would. I kind of love it. I, I like it. I it. like it for the reasons you said, Tongue, earlier, where it's like, it's almost like the template for those, like, for silly animal movies. But okay, like, I'm locking it too. It man. works. Yeah. I love it. it shouldn't work. But the it reason, does. So the the thing that I was gonna say, Shannon, after you said Air Bud, was Beethoven. Those Beethoven. movies, oh, yeah, 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 those yeah, yeah. those yeah. bring me back to an era of my childhood and our childhood, I would say. And maybe it doesn't hit for like people that are older than us or younger us, whatever. But in our time, Air Bud and Beethoven were the fucking yeah. bomb. And it was yeah. like you're seeing a real dog. A real dog in a movie that could play a piano or it could fucking like, you know, uh, play basketball and volleyball and all these things. And it was amazing because they're real dogs. And I love that era. Like I, I just made fun of Call of the Wild. They just don't make them like they used to. They just don't. So yeah. I think Air Bud was like one of the final pillars of that, you know? Totally agree. Yeah, no, I, I'm happy to lock it. Dan? Yeah, let's lock it. Yeah, it kind of, yeah, it definitely fits on this list for sure. 
Cool. So what we have locked. I th- I'm oh. sorry to cut you off. Just as another argument for it, I feel like we'd all be lying to ourselves if we said, "Okay, we're doing this this topic," and all of us didn't think of Airbud within ten seconds. For sure. Like, yeah, we, yeah. We all did, no matter what. Yeah. We all did. So there, that's a testament to it. So hundred percent, hundred percent. We have Lion King, Jaws, Homeward Bound, and Airbud locked. Holy shit. We just need one more locked and we're good to go. Of course, the locks are non-binding. We can switch things up if we really want to. I'll I'll be the ones that are starred but not locked. Paddington, Kung Fu Panda, Planet of the Apes, and Scooby Doo. Dan, mm-hmm. where's you, out of the, all the ones that I just mm-hmm. listed, where's your head at? Um, I'm leaning more towards I think Kung Fu Panda actually out of all Interesting. Those, I think. Yeah. Cuz your family watched it, maybe. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, you maybe watched it that one time. Maybe like, watched 2008. it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Dan wasn't there, actually. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't there. Yeah, he yeah. heard about it. Yeah, they told me. Yeah, I, I, I'm just trying. I'm thinking like, which one would I? I don't know. Actually, yeah, it's hard. It's really hard. I, I think Kung Fu Panda though. That's fair. Um, yeah, I, I like. I really love the character designs. Um, and. Yeah, great cast for all the characters too. They're fun. They're it's kind of a Dragon Ball like energy to them as well. Totally, and yeah. it's like it tells also good lessons. I think it's very kid friendly, and it's Has a like movie. An adoptive parent yeah. uh, storyline going on to it as yeah. well. Like I like all that. Yeah, arguably one of DreamWorks is best. Honestly, like Kung yes. Fu Pan- like they have a lot of good movies, but I think Kung Fu Panda is up there. Which one, like out of the the Kung Fu Panda movies, which was the one with the villain was like the the like the big like tiger? I just remember him like like running oh, through the temple one. or one? something. Is that, is that not one? That's one. one? That's one. Number one or two. two. Number number two is the the peacock voiced by Gary Oldman. Oh, okay. Yeah, and that's the ah. one with the Dragon Ball and okay. and pretty, Maya finish. I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, it's okay. pretty crazy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Keep going back to that scene of it, like that, like the I don't know. The, I guess it's the first one. That yeah, it's good. Shannon, yeah. where's your head at? Out of all the things that I've listed here, is something that you know that you uh, really Pat- think of? Paddington to yeah. me. I think uh, as a secondary, it would be Kung Fu Panda, but Paddington to me is it. It kind of reigns supreme in this one. Justin, what do you think? It's probably either <laughs> Apes or Paddington, and and my reasoning. I mean, Kung Fu Panda is amazing. Like uh, everything you guys all just said, I 100 percent agree with. I think where my mind is going to is is just this is a a really good movie sort of thing. And I feel like I get more film enjoyment out of Paddington and or the Planet of the Apes. I think overall, like from a from a technical standpoint, from a character standpoint, and again, Kung Fu, and again, I don't need to keep saying this, but Kung Fu Pain is fucking incredible. And it does have all those really great, th- those strengths as well. But I feel like Paddington or, or Planet of the Apes is just a little bit higher for me personally. This is my... I, I love that you said that. I nominated Kung Fu Panda. I love Kung Fu Panda. Fucking great movies. Really is. Really is. Paddington is transcends all of that shit. <laughs> like I th- Paddington is just a wholesome experience, unlike any other that is just family friendly without being gross. It doesn't have yeah. to like bend to this like social norm of like what jokes should be and what like i don't know it just does its own thing and it exists it shouldn't work and it yeah. just and does and it's so it's charming without pandering that's and... the word pandering it doesn't pander it just yeah. is and it's it's better for it, it it's a shame you haven't seen it dan purely because i feel well it's a shame because one you just haven't seen it and two it, i feel like this would be a much shorter conversation if you had seen Paddington, I feel like again, as great as these other movies have been, I feel like you would be like, "Oh yeah, it's gonna be, it's it's gotta be Paddington." I Quite- gotta fucking watch Paddington. You should, you should, and also, yeah. I'm pretty sure that your family watched Paddington instead of Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bear. Yes, <laughs> there was some sort of bear. <laughs> The thing is that I would also, again, I just said how much I love Kung Fu Panda. I would also throw my hat into also Planet of the Apes in the way that like, I think if we're thinking about technical, like a technical Marvel in a way, like I think Rise of the Planet of the Apes trilogy, the new one is just, it's incredible. I've only actually seen those movies like once each, maybe the first one I saw like two times or something, but I always had a good time and I always was blown away at the technology of motion capture. And of course, the story is really good and all that stuff as well. But I think there's something to be said about like just just really good, just technical 
animal shit going on <laughs> in the yeah. in the Matt Reeves stuff. And I mean, if it was up to me, like I might pit Homeward Bound and Airbud together in the way that like they both fill the nostalgia train for me. One of those two does. Uh, I mean, they they can both certainly be on the list. That's completely fine. If, ultimately, I wouldn't really care. But like, if I had to nitpick, maybe I would take one of those two out to put Planet of the Apes and Paddington onto the list. I, I was actually going to make a simil- similar argument that I think Planet of the Apes is such a technically good movie that what they've done to create these these animals in the movie and Caesar is an undeniably captivating lead as an animal in that movie that it would almost be a detriment to this list not to have it on there in the top five yeah dan what are you thinking here so are we saying between paddington and rise of the planet of the apes um i think those two together or potentially arguing that homeward bound and or airbud oh could be up for discussion Mm. as well yeah i'm Mm. comfortable keeping one of those two for sure if i had to pick uh, I, i don't know Right now, I would say Airbud because I just love the idea of a fucking dog in a <laughs> basketball jersey <laughs> fucking shooting hoops. But I mean, I also grew up with the Homeward Bound movies and I also love them to death. So I don't I don't know. I wonder if that's kind of playing too much into our and it's us for making this list. So fuck it. But yeah. I wonder if that's playing the nostalgia aspect of Homeward Bound is playing almost too much into it where the like the iconic of Airbud, which is a du- that's maybe one of the dumbest sentences I've ever said. In my life. <laughs> but it really is like it is the template for those really dumb. This movie shouldn't work, but it's kind of charming thing. It ended with Airbud, but it also kind of it, it started this franchise. Yeah. I think more people are honestly familiar and appreciate Airbud more than Homeward Dude, Bound. Those well, dogs are in space now. and and i just want to call back to something that you said about like the the ensemble of like the homeward bound like cast the real life animals and how it was like sort of the the start of what that was but in 1986 we had the real life cast of milo and otis let's not talk about milo and otis because there's a lot of animal abuse in that yeah i'm just saying as far as a real life animal cast ensemble cast goes it had been done at that point Mm -hmm. yeah that's true Mm -hmm. that's true but then for me it also goes into like an argument of like iconic quality versus like actual movie quality and i would for that i would definitely lean homeward bound over air bud that's true like, it's, it's, I, it, I did make that argument for like playing of the apes too it was like, <laughs> yeah i'm going for technical yeah, now. Well, yeah and now true. we're going back to dan's point of like are we ranking it based on if the movie's good or if the animals, we like the animals better? All of that is coming into play right now. So, yeah, I it's don't like know. it's been a long time since I've seen either of those movies. I've, I've probably seen just the first Air Bud, and it was a long, long time ago now. It was like probably right around the time it, like, I didn't see it at the theater or anything, but like right when it came to home video. You didn't see it with your uh, family at the theater? No, I didn't. No. <laughs> but uh, that you remember. Uh, that I remember, yeah. But, uh, and Homer Bound even further back, kind of the same thing on like VHS. But yeah. it, like in my memory of these things, it's like there's a cheapness to Air Bud, whereas there's like a more of like a honing, like a quality mm. family film, like Homeward Bound. Mm. Okay, yeah. so what I'm hearing here is I feel like Paddington's going to make the list. I, I feel I, I feel very strongly that Paddington should make the list. I would actually stomp my feet on the ground to to fight for it because it's it's just so fucking good. But then it becomes the conversation of here if I if I were to lock Paddington right now, we technically have five, but there's an argument that Planet of the Apes might get in there. Paddington, Lion King, Jaws. Homeward Bound and Air Bud, that's five. But it does seem like it's missing a Planet of the Apes like in this list. So did, I would argue get rid of Air Bud. Okay. Really? Oh. What's, what, wait, you would argue it, but what's the argument? No, I'd just argue it. No, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no I, I think as, if I think back to my childhood, like which movie made a bigger impact yeah. on me? It is Homeward Bound. It's this movie filled with like hope and terror and what ifs. And it just pulls at the heartstrings a little bit more. Like, is Airbud really fucking cool and a really cute dog? Yeah. 
but I don't think it it has the same lasting presence in your heart. Yeah. Cool. Oh, in your heart. <laughs> You're probably right. I mean, I think I do like Air Bud on a superficial level. Like, I mean, like we watched Air Bud not that long ago, a few years ago, Justin and I. Yeah. But if I like even that day when we're like talking about what movie we liked better, it probably would have been Homeward Bound. Yeah. Oh, it was. It was Homeward Bound. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean for me <laughs> yeah. Chant like. Yeah. We didn't really talk about Chance and Sally, like mm-hmm. of, of of the group here. Like arguably the more fun characters than Shadow. Shadow has like an awesome moment at the end, Peta. But like, <laughs> but the other two are yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, the other two like really round out that that cast. Um, okay, yeah, I, I'm comfortable taking out Airbud, putting in Planet of the Apes, and keeping Homeward Bound. What what does everyone else say about that? Oh, I feel sad that we're losing Airbud, but I like I. You won back your nomination, though. Well, yeah, but I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm you here. You sacrificed a golden retriever for your nomination. Yeah, for another golden <laughs> for, retriever. For, you're not that. Uh, you're not that fucking. For than three that. animals, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A dog yeah. died for your age, all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dan, how do you feel about that? Yeah, yeah, the, I'm, I'm cool with that. Yeah, uh, it, it's nice to have a movie like. Planet of the Apes represented here as well. It kind of like feels like again, I like uh, it's kind of like a King Kong kind of like yeah. uh, nomination. Like if I'm thinking of like the Peter Jackson one, something that represents you know uh, like that a gritty type of animation, animal, yeah, movie. a little more gritty, yeah, yeah a, little a little bit. More I think it mature. I think it also kind of does a very similar thing for that kind of stuff that the Lion King is doing. Like the Lion King for me is encompassing a lot of those like the Disney Pixar stuff where. It is the it is the one at which all of the other ones are kind of measured upon. Like you don't get Ratatouille without Lion King. You don't get Zootopia without Lion King. Like all yeah. of those ones that we possibly could nominate, mm-hmm. they're all it's all going to come back to Lion King. And I think for that technical element, something like a Planet of the Apes, I think kind of does that same thing. I, I yeah. would I would say like an, a distinction there too is not just that it wouldn't be this without Lion King or you know this one without Lion King. In in that case, those ones are those are great great movies as well but it's like none of them in my mind at least stood out any more than lion king would as well right yeah yeah Yeah, for sure definitely okay i think we have our list or at least our top five here we have paddington lion king jaws planet of the apes and homeward bound that is our five i think we already agreed that number five would be lion king yeah we want to do that that. keep it like that i think so too i mean like it's a it's a hard one because like i think objectively maybe it's not objectively heavily subjectively but i think lion king could easily be number one on this list you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. just yeah, classically... Does it doesn't have to be? But yeah. it doesn't have to be for yeah. our list, is what I'm thinking. Like, I mean, I I love The Lion King. Don't get me wrong. One of my favorite Disney movies ever. But, I mean, we just... I've talked about The Lion King so much over the last however many episodes of podcasts that I've done in the past that it's time for another thing to shine. So, Lion King at number <laughs> five is fine. Uh, what do we think of number four? I was going to say probably Planet of the Apes. And I say that because... It was a discussion to get it there. I think to put it a little higher is a detriment to the other ones that we had kind of locked in previously. Yeah. I'm happy with that. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. Yeah. Planet of the Apes is number four. Now we're getting into it. So here, Dan, you might not agree with me. I think Jaws is number three. I Uh, would wholeheartedly disagree. mm, I was going to disagree as well. Dan started the theme That's music like, there. Did like, you hear that? <laughs> okay, here, here, here's... Dan the, is sending the shark after us. The <laughs> only reason I was going to put Jaws at number three, and at most number two for me, anyways, is because like Lion King, Jaws has been talked to, to death <laughs> on this podcast, on this show, on many other episodes, and has been shouted out a zillion times. If I'm putting Lion King at number five, I don't need Jaws at number one because we've already talked about Jaws a million times on this show. That's where I'm coming from, but I'm happy to hear the argument. I mean, ultimately, maybe I should be thinking about this show in a vacuum and I shouldn't be like thinking about all the other episodes that we've done on this show. But if that's the case, then Lion King is higher. So it's it's just a weird little distinction for me. Right. Yeah. Right. That's that's valid. That's valid. Yeah, I would actually still be okay with putting Lion King a little bit higher, like like a like a number four, to be honest with you. But uh that's a whole other thing. But <laughs> Okay, so what's number uh, three for you guys? We'll we'll start there, and then we'll figure it out. Number three. <laughs> no one's like, oh, I don't know. 
Um, and okay. I, I should say, I, I really like Jaws. I love Jaws. But again, look back at other episodes we've done on this show. We've talked about Jaws many times. So I think number three for me would be Homeward Bound. Yeah, that's okay. pretty good. Yeah. I'm okay, okay with that. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. And then we're talking Paddington and Jaws for yeah. two and one here. And I will say that old I, combo. Yeah. That old <laughs> classic combo. <Sorry. laughs> I would have put Jaws as my number one. I probably would have as well. And I and I know you you just made an excellent argument why, like, for this particular episode, we shouldn't for the like the, using the Lion King stuff. Mm-hmm. But honestly, like if we put that aside, because that is my own feeling as someone who who has done all these episodes and stuff like that, I I don't want to make that the main reason why we don't put Jaws at number one. Right. But if I'm objectively or if my thoughts actually putting them side by side, I do think Paddington is just a better movie. Both of them. Um, So my my argument, I mean, I think I'm going to draw parallels right now between Jaws and um, The Lion King as to why you wouldn't necessarily compare them. That The Lion King, while you do have Simba as sort of that that main hero, that main character, the reason The Lion King is so great is because of its like ensemble cast. The Lion King is not what it is without Timon and Pumbaa, and it's not what it is without mm. Rafiki, where Jaws hinges on this fucking shark yeah it's the only one of these characters that has its own recognizable theme song it it has <laughs> stood the test of time as this fear people have been afraid of sharks because of what yeah great, Jaws great, yeah. great white sharks still get a bad rap they because still get of a bad this movie. yeah that it has has jaws I mean, done that, a commercial with the queen <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> and I don't think it's ever eaten marmalade. Ever. <laughs> it it also but, like inadvertently like set a standard for like uh, how uh, horror movies are done, where it's like you yes, don't yes. see the thing and it makes it more scary, right? Yes, yeah. I I agree. And and to be honest with you, I've I also have heard these arguments before on this show. <laughs> so yeah. It's 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 one of those things where like I I totally get it. And if we if if we're leaning Jaws. I get it too. I mean, I also think we've talked about Paddington on podcasts in the past as well. Maybe on not on a ranked episode, but if I'm thinking about like, oh man, like there, Paddington is just such a wholesome fucking thing. And in a world that's just dark and just gloomy and just full of shit, you can easily turn to Paddington and just have a good time. You can shut off the rest of the stuff around the world that's bad, and you can just enjoy this fucking bear. He's just a cute guy in a blue rain jacket and a red hat, and he loves to eat yeah. marmalade, and he has a very fun family, and they, and they go in little hijinks together. And I don't know how else to say it without like you guys like watching the film, especially Paddington 2, which I think is, like again, a 10 out of 10 movie. So my vote is obviously Paddington. See, I feel great watching Jaws. It's an uplift movie for me. They blow the shit out of that shark by the end of the movie. That's a great ending. Yeah, yeah. But it's so funny. It's so funny that you kind of say that, Tom, because I was watching um, uh, this clip of of, uh, Stephen Colbert, and he was talking with Quentin Tarantino about uh, The Thing. And he said, uh, The Thing is his go to comfort movie. Yeah. Which on the surface makes absolutely no sense. But where it's something that you. You know, the not necessarily because, you know, the outcome, but because you feel uh, a sense of like kind of wonder in it, that wonder and that like excitement kind of brings you back to the first time you saw it. I wonder if it's kind of the same thing with that we could refer to with Jaws is, yeah, on, of course, Paddington is a much nicer, more comfortable, wholesome movie. Sure. Obviously. But I think when you're when you're talking about an actual film and you're and you're you're comparing Jaws and Paddington to watch jaws for like the 30th time and you still get that feeling of like oh fuck don't go in the water don't go in the water yeah, don't go in the water yeah. don't go in the water i think that that's a testament to it that it still stands fucking 50 was it 50 years or something now that's been out yeah that's that that's a powerful thing to consider i think uh, yes yes definitely and my art not my, i'm not going to counter argument that but i do think for jaws's credit I think it's shaped the movie industry in bigger ways than a Paddington movie has, which I think is important. Like Dan said, like I think that a lot of movies followed suit of what Jaws did in the past and even subsequent Jaws movies couldn't do after the first Jaws movies and mm-hmm. we're still getting fucking shark movies that suck. 
like mm-hmm. the Meg Two, <laughs> like, <laughs> Sharknado. Yeah, yeah, Jaws just the... had that like that shot with like the zoom in thing yeah. as well. You know, like on the beach. Like so many movies riff off of They're that. They're trying too. to do that, and I get mm-hmm. it. Like Jaws, yes, it's its own thing. It's it's hard to argue against Jaws, and I am trying to do it with this fucking bear. But I'm t- <laughs> <laughs> if but, anybody could, it would be yeah. Paddington. If anybody could beat but, Jaws, I, I, it'd be Paddington. I, if I'm thinking of a movie I want to watch more, it is Paddington. I'll be. That that's kind of uh, how it is. I do think like Jaws is uh, uh, maybe a more influential film, which I think is important. We should we should think mm-hmm. about that. We should talk about that. But if I'm thinking about like a more enjoyable film, and I I always like a movie with a message or something that you learn from it or something like that. Yeah, don't um, go in the water. Yeah, 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 they, <laughs> yeah. great. Yeah, I, I I haven't taken a bath in ages. <laughs> Laura loves it. Laura loves yeah. it. Um, yeah. um, for interest sake, just because I. Th- thought this was uh, maybe would be a tiebreaker f- in my mind i went to rotten tomatoes jaws 97 percent paddington 97 <laughs> percent oh <laughs> shit. go paddington 2 <laughs> paddington 2 99 percent oh wow is, that's what that, i'm saying yeah. that's, <laughs> that's what i'm saying <laughs> i just thought that was that yeah. was i was like oh maybe this will draw a line in the sand for me and it it did not so i i think it's it's again it, it's it goes back to all the other nominations that it's like oh Dan hasn't seen this movie Justin hasn't she, I am I'm it's an uphill battle I don't think I'm gonna win this but I do think you guys could fuck you guys just Paddington watch it. amazing it is watch amazing. I'll, Paddington I'll two you, we'll, my God we'll watch Paddington two within the next we'll we'll watch Paddington two within the next few weeks yeah I and, might maybe I'm overhyping it but I just think it's it's just a pleasant ass movie and. You probably haven't but seen a movie think, like that in a long time. So I do think regardless of how amazing it is, I just think there's too many reasons to put Jaws at number one. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And there is one big reason not to have it at number one is because we've already had this conversation on this episode <laughs> before. <laughs> no, no, no. It's fine. It's fine. We should. Have- All right. Lion King's number one. Class does not yeah. Lion King number- <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's put Jaws at number one. That's fucking anyway. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Yeah, um, are we landing on that? Yeah, we should <laughs> land on Jaws <laughs> number one. There's a lot of laughing, but are we landing on that? <laughs> it's <laughs> it's laughing, and then after this episode, I'm gonna kill you for not making the right decision. No, no, no. I, I, I should be clear. I, I do really like Jaws, and I respect the hell out of it. But the only reason I know all of those stories that Dan has told before is because we talked we talked about them on this show. The ones like, oh yeah, Bruce the shark, he was malfunctioning, so we had to film it the certain way. Yeah. Anyways, um, number five on our top five movies with animals as leads, Lion King. Number four, the Planet of the Apes trilogy, the Matt Reeves one. Number three, Homeward Bound. Number two, Paddington. And number one, Cats, baby. (laughs) The butthole Butthole cut of Jaws. The butthole cut of Jaws, which... That's really the only reason I was fighting against it is because there was no butthole cut of Jaws, and that's that's a shame. Because there was that a you know about. Well, there was a butthole I'll cut of every other movie that Roy we've Shiner's had butt. on this list. <laughs> the the scene where where Shadow yells, "Peter!" You you see Peter's butthole <laughs> as, as he's running towards his dog. Uh, it sounds wrong. He's like a 10 year old boy. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and do honorable mentions here. Honorable mentions. Dan, do you want to just rapid fire the rest of your list here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I put on uh, so on my honorable mentions, Babe and Babe oh, 2, yeah. Pig in the City, The Jungle Book, mm-hmm. Chicken Run, Zootopia, Congo because of the murder apes. Oh, um, yeah, of course. Got it. Yeah. And another one, I really, I w- almost well, was pretty close uh, for nominating this one. All Dogs Go to Heaven. Aww. Oh, yeah. yeah nice. I love that movie. That's yeah. nice. Justin, what do you got? Yeah, I had I had Jaws, I had Airbud, I had Paddington, I had King Kong, I had Babe, I had Stuart Little. Oh uh, yeah. I had Ratatouille. Again, the adventures of Milo and Otis, but you have to ignore all the terrible, terrible animal cruelty that went on behind the scenes. Don't look into it if you want to be happy. Old Yeller, uh the Fox and the Hound, Dunstan mm-hmm. checks in. Oh, <gasps> Oh, you ever watch that one? What's yeah, that? I did. Yeah. Jason, yeah. Jason Alexander Costanza. <laughs> yeah. Works at a hotel and then this this chimpanzee shows up and he starts working at the hotel. It's fucking stupid. It's very airbud esque, but it's not nearly as good. I was this close to doing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. Me too. The new one? I was yeah. real close to the new one. No, no, no. Like the like 1990 version. The yeah. Old, okay. The but, only 
Well, but, I shouldn't say the only good one. I haven't seen the newest, the newest uh, one. The new one's better. The, the, new, the, the new one's the, the, the best one. The best live action one. All right. say. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, and then Free Willy. Oh, yes. That fucking guy. Well, that yeah. fucking guy. I, the whale's good. The kid's okay. <laughs> the kid is bad. The yeah, kid, the is, kid just, is bad. I honestly, God, he sucks. The whale should have crushed that kid. <laughs> the, I, oh, yeah. I wish the whale would have. The yeah. whale don't keep whales in captivity. They should eat you. Yeah. So yeah, we should have freed Willy a long time ago. Damn straight. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of free Willy, big dick godly. Yeah. Out. Yeah. I just keep thinking of that Simpsons joke that like Willy crushed our boy. It's like Ugh, <laughs> yeah. what a mess. Yeah. <laughs> Simpsons did it all, man. Honestly, that's the reason why I was so uh, for Rise of the Planet of the Apes trilogy is because of the Simpsons. When <laughs> that's the line. Yeah. It's, it's I hate every ape I see from chin pan A to chin pan Z. Z. <laughs> You'll never make a monkey out of me. It's so good. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Shannon, what do you have? Rapid fire. Well, it can't be that rapid because I'm trying to skip over ones that have already been said here. So, um, ooh, one that you guys watched uh, and close to my heart, The Cat from Outer Space. Oh, um, <laughs> another one that's very much in line with that <laughs> style of movie uh the barefoot executive it was a chimp in an office and it was amazing um okay also chimps uh the movie monkey business then uh black beauty we got a horse in there i think it's the only horse black beauty yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. oh we Um, will untapped market there of course yeah there's a lot of horse another horse one sea biscuit um yeah yeah. yeah. beethoven was mentioned early on uh flipper taking it back to the sea oh shit um, i forgot about flipper wow lassie another iconic dog yeah. movie mm-hmm. and then i ventured a little bit into dragon territory and i wouldn't know how that would fly with this group um, definitely wouldn't the, the 2016 pete's dragon incredible it's a good movie. movie oh so good incredible when he comes and, like out of the tree and he falls yeah. cheryl like broke down she was like <gasps> it's incredible like, yeah she was weeping it, yeah it took so a good, horribly racist Disney movie and made it very, very um, modern. I don't know. Acceptable. <laughs> Less racist, nice. I guess. Nice. And uh, finally, never ending story. Another Falcor mm-hmm. dragon. You could life. also focus on, is it Atreyu, the, the horse that dies in the swamp? Uh, Atreyu is the boy. Oh, Trey is the boy. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, his stupid horse. <laughs> it's stupid horse. I don't think the stupid horse counts as an animal. Lead, yes. so. <laughs> and in number five, the stupid horse from. <laughs> I, I am sad we missed out on so many horse movies, but I was just looking at a lot list. of horse movies. We have yeah. a lot of like we have every we have different things, which I'm happy about. We have a lion. True. We have an ape. We have a dog. We have a bear and we have a shark. That's pretty cool. Oh, that's, pretty that. that's pretty good. good. That's pretty good. Pretty, yeah. good. pretty good. Are there uh, any bird movies? Birds. Oh, tons. Well, not. Well, yeah, the is there tons? The movie bird. Rio? The movie birds. Rio? Probably Rio. Angry Birds. Oh, yeah. I was I was reading a meme. And it said Remy from Ratatouille versus Stuart. If they had a fight, who would win? And then someone wrote, Remy, I hate this debate. He's a street rat. He would absolutely clobber Stuart with his bare hands. Stuart hasn't worked for anything in his life. Remy knows struggle. <laughs> Stuart is a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Which, yeah, it's true. Yeah, he is. He's just a little yeah. bitch. Stuart just gets everything. He, he has fucking clothes. Is a little car. Rem- He's a car. Remy could, <laughs> Remy could go on top of somebody's head, at, like a UFC fighter's head, and control him and just pummel the shit out of Stuart. <laughs> yeah. It's true. <laughs> Simple. Yeah. For myself, let's see. Finding Nemo, huge, I think, uh, mm. would have been really good. This was Dragon Category, so I, I I think that's like a maybe a different episode. I don't know if we maybe how to We've train your top dragon. five dragons. We already done way. that. Yeah, so we did. How to, we did do that. So. Forget how to this train your dragon. This, this literal group did it. That's yeah, true. yeah. Ninja Turtles, the new one, is mm. amazing. Puss in Boots from last year, also yeah. amazing. Oliver and Company, really like that one. Oh, Ice yeah, Age, okay. Rango, Ice Age, yeah. Rango's really good. That's oh yeah, that's a little, little dark horse. Porco Rosso, it's a Studio Ghibli film. I really like enjoy it. Oh, well, yeah, and uh, if you want your heart broken, Fox and the Hound. Oh, mm. yeah, so yeah. sad. It's a- Interesting that you bring up Ice Age because that's I was like I was wondering if we could go prehistoric and I didn't know if Jurassic Park was going to get brought up in this at all. So yeah, just interesting that you brought up Ice Age. Well, I mean, we got a sloth, we got an elephant, we got a fucking tiger thing. We're... It's true, they are animals though. You're yeah. right. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't consider the T Rex though the lead of, of Jurassic Park. Though. No, and then do you know what? That's no. fair. 
That yeah. is fair. Right. Yeah. I think that's where the... When I was discussing this episode with my sister, she's like, oh, clearly Space Jam. That She's like Bugs Bunny. And then I was like, but that movie is an MJ focused movie, yeah, right? Yeah, like the, you can't call Bugs the lead when my, Michael Jordan exists. I love so. Space Jam. Everyone knows I love Space Jam. This yeah. would, that would you not, won't shut up about it. That yeah. would not qualify for this thing. It would not See, qualify. That's I what I told it her. It just wouldn't. It just wouldn't. And then she told me the show is stupid. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> <I'm> not, <laughs> fair enough. And it is. It is. Uh, <laughs> and Great Mouse Detective. I really like that one too. Oh, um, oh yes. yes. Oh, why didn't I say that yeah. one? Yeah, that's such a good movie. Yeah. yeah. It's a Sherlock Holmes, but yeah, nice. I love that movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that's it for today's show. But before we go, of course, we got to thank our guests, Justin, Shannon, and Dan. Justin and Shannon, do you have anything to plug? Uh, well, here's the thing uh, we, we host a podcast the plug we haven't done a show in a while um for the main reason that we moved in uh the end of may and uh for reasons that you two know uh it's, it was an absolute shit show but we're, <laughs> we're good and we're here now and uh, we're gonna be starting to pull the plug back up again uh very 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 soon listeners you can't see it but you guys can see we're currently recording in our garage and it's what? working is it working pretty well it it's sounds good incredible. pretty well it sounds us. good this, is it cold this garage space is no it's it's heated here's the thing there's an illegal vent in the garage like they're not supposed to have a vent in the garage <laughs> like somebody put it in so garage. we have air conditioning we got heating it's all fucking the garage is a party space yeah, yeah. really wow yeah that's incredible yeah. all right yeah. So, uh, yeah, new episodes of Pull the Plug coming, um, hopefully, to your ear holes very, very soon. PTPpodcast.com. I'm still paying for the domain. So if you could buy some merch and recoup some of those losses, that would be great. We don't make money podcasting. We're not one of those people. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Justin and Shannon. Dan, uh, what are you up to these days? Do you have anything to plug? If not anything personal, then maybe a game yeah. you're playing, a charity, anything like that, a book? Or, a uh, game or a charity yeah and dan's gonna be like uh definitely a game <laughs> no uh, nothing really to plug but i mean if you if you want to uh join me and uh you know sharing beloved memories of chipmunk adventure or turner and hooch <laughs> you can definitely you know message me on x at, at uh, lewis tully <laughs> formerly known as twitter yeah <laughs> Amazing. Don't I'm, you hate saying at on X? I really do. I left I Twitter. Or I, it, left, yeah. I left Twitter as soon as it became X. So I, <laughs> no, thank you. But find Dan there if you want to uh, message him about movies that he might have seen with his family. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you can find me and the rest of the shows in the Pod Cavern at www.podcavern.com. Check out all the shows, leave a review, do all the fun things, like it, subscribe, all those things. But until next time, we'll see you later. And that's been Top 5 Movies with Animals as Leads. Rawr! Yeah! <laughs> <Gazoo>. <laughs> <laughs>